If you wanted to create a new personal reality, a new life, then you would have to start thinking about what you've been thinking about and change it. You would have to become aware of your unconscious thoughts and observe them. Most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality and it doesn't work. You literally have to become someone else. If you want to change your life, you got to make a decision to change your life. And sitting around and waiting to feel ready is not the decision I want you to make. Yes or no. Make the binary code decision. Yes or no. It's a commitment. It's not a feeling. Commitments don't have nothing to do with your feelings. You do it because you're supposed to. So as you're looking at the choices that are before you, where you've got a path that's well-trodden, you've got a path that literally is invisible and won't become something until you step on it. You have to understand that that's what this life is meant to be and that the only frustration that you will look back on with tremendous regret is knowing that you did what was easy even though it wasn't you. You can do anything you want without limitation. Whatever it is that you decide you want to make come true in your life, you can do that. It is gonna take an inhuman amount of work. You're gonna to have to be prepared to break yourself in half. You are going to have to learn more than anyone has ever learned. You're gonna to have to push yourself harder than anyone has ever asked you to push yourself before. You're gonna go way beyond your breaking point. And why? Because as Malcolm X said, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. In this life, to be successful, you always need to stay ready because your opportunity will come and go before you even know it. These are the moments, the opportunities that will come and pass us by. And it's about taking the time to prepare so we can capture the moment, so that we can win that very moment. Successful people know that if you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. You do not prepare to be against the world. You prepare to act reasonably within a chaotic world where not everybody is as well prepared as you are. The question is, will you do it for yourself? Manifesting is intentionally training your brain and your nervous system to believe in something that hasn't happened yet. That's what manifesting is. Manifesting is a power tool. It's backed by neuroscience. It is backed by years of research. And when used properly, it helps you achieve your goals because it helps you prepare to do the work. I use science-backed manifesting tools every single day to shut down the negative conversations in my life and to live a big life and to take big risks. And dude, Olympic athletes use manifesting. And we're gonna get into how Olympic athletes and the world's leading you know, business leaders and successful people everywhere use it. But I'm telling you right now, the way you shut down your internal conversation that is holding you back is manifesting. Manifesting is one of the first things you have to learn how to do to get started on making this a reality. So what is manifesting? Manifesting is mentally training for getting what you want. That's all that it is. It is part of the toolkit that successful people around the world use. Let me tell you what manifesting is not. Manifesting is not thinking thoughts and then hoping they come through. That is what people do on their seventh birthday and they blow out the candles. That is not what we are doing here. Manifesting is based in neuroscience. It is a tool that you are going to use precisely, intentionally, systematically, with purpose. Because you use manifesting to rewire your mind and your body and your spirit to help you do the work to achieve your dreams. When you use manifesting properly, you are removing the mental obstacles of self-doubt, resistance, fear, perfectionism, feeling overwhelmed, other people's expectations, all that stuff that is holding you in place right now, that makes you spin in circles, 
manifesting clears that shit out and it programs using science a completely different way of thinking and feeling about the things that you want to create in your life. And when you manifest properly, it's almost like the pregame training that you do before the big game. It prepares you to take action. It boosts your confidence. It gets you ready to do that thing. There's three Ps that you gotta annihilate, crush, or destroy if they're getting in the way of your progress in a relationship or your career or your happiness or your health. These are the three Ps that make learned helplessness. Number one, you think the problem is permanent. Once you've had enough disappointment, sometimes your brain doesn't want to get disappointed, so it's a permanent problem. Please write down, no problem is permanent, only your soul is permanent. Nothing's forever, everything changes, everything eventually ends and something new begins. That's part of life, those are the seasons of life. The second P that keeps people in learned helplessness so they don't change, this belief's gotta be annihilated, broken through, and that it's pervasive. That means that because my relationship's not great, my whole life is horrible. Then you're forgetting you do have health, or you do have friends, or you do have a job, or you do have whatever, I can breathe. And the third one is we think the problem is personal. There's something wrong with me. And if you start believing that, it becomes self-fulfilling. You give up. See, I'm not good enough. I'm not beautiful enough. I'm not smart enough. I always screw it up. So those three P's got to be destroyed. If we don't have a sense of purpose, then you're doing the thing you're doing just for the sake of doing it, right? Like, I'm, I'm making money just for the sake of money. I'm, 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 I'm doing, I'm turning this wrench just for the sake of turning this wrench. And when, when that we, when we do things that contribute to something else, contribute to something bigger, it gives our lives and our work meaning. And when we have a sense of meaning, when we have a sense of purpose, it does many, many things to us. It builds our self confidence. It makes us better decision makers. It makes us better in relationships. And at the end of the day, it makes us enjoy our lives and find fulfillment in my work, in, in our work. Um, and I think so often, um, you know, and, and I think there's a, a lot of, a lot of people don't think about it this way. They don't think about what's the purpose of all of this. Let's, what's the reason I'm doing all of this. We usually default to, I got to pay my bills. Now, that's a function, you know, um, because I was told to do it. Uh, because everybody has to work or because I'm just trying to, uh, I want to make this company the biggest or the best to what end, to what, to what value. Um, and so to truly understand purpose, um, I think, like I said, it, it sort of just, just has positive effects all over the place. In the real world, we miss sometimes by a lot, but we have to keep trying. The more we work on it, the better we get. The more shots we take, the more times we'll hit the target and the more good we'll do. When a philosopher, he said, is exhorting, persuading, rebuking, or discussing some aspect of philosophy, if the audience pour forth trite and commonplace words of praise in their enthusiasm and unrestraint, if they even shout, if they gesticulate, if they are moved and aroused and swayed by the charm of his words, by the rhythm of his phrases, and by certain rhetorical repetitions, then you may know that both the speaker and his audience are wasting their time, and that they are not hearing a philosopher speaking, but a flute player performing. But this inner battle, but this inner battle, as Martin Luther King Jr. would later call the civil war between the North and South of our souls, rings true to any person with a shred of self-awareness. We have competing parts within us, and what matters in life is which side we choose to turn ourselves over to. One must design one's life, Poseidonius said, to live contemplating the truth and order of the universe and promoting it as much as possible, being led in no respect by the irrational part of the soul who comes his way. A wise man can make use of whatever comes his way, he said, but is in want of nothing. On the other hand, he said, nothing is needed by the fool, for he does not understand how to use anything, but he is in want of everything. There is no better definition of a stoic. To have but not want, to enjoy without needing. The ending day sees them brought low. If the breaking day sees someone proud, the ending day sees them brought low. No one should put too much trust in triumph. No one should give up hope of trials improving. Clotho mixes one with the other and stops fortune from resting, spinning every fate around. 
No one has had so much divine favor that they could guarantee themselves tomorrow. God keeps our lives hurtling on, spinning in a whirlwind.